Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at what we can do to make an MVC style Xamarin project or mono game project. We're going to build that today with Xamarin Studio on a Mac. The same process will work just fine on a PC as well. You just need to adapt obviously to use instead of Finder, use Explorer, and then go from there. So here we are using Xamarin Studio. Again on a PC we'll be using Visual Studio or you can use the older version of Xamarin itself. And we're going to make a brand new project right here. And so we'll get a new solution. In the new solution section we're going to go down to the mono game sub menu and choose app. In the app sub menu we want to choose the cross-platform desktop project because it's the C-sharp project we're making. And then go ahead and hit next on that. Now, what I like to do with this is I want to uh, make sure I can put this into GitHub and keep track of it so I can update this regularly and make it it's the best possible process. So do you want to make sure you make a name for your project that doesn't have any spaces in it and also one that makes sense as to what you're actually doing. So we're going to do right here, we'll just quick game. And I don't like having it in just some default folder that's given to it, so I like to keep my, all my games together in a specific area, just like we keep all our C++ code in one area or our Java code in an area. So instead of using this project subfolder, I'm going to go to my documents section. And inside documents, I have a game dev folder right here. I'm going to choose that and choose open. And so in my documents folder, I now have my game, quick game. It's inside that documents and created a project within the solution directory. I'm not going to worry about version control with this. I'll be doing that manually using GitHub. We'll take a look at that in just a bit. Then hit create. We've got our basic structure. As you can see right here, over on the left in our solution menu, we have all the files that are created for us by default. And we're going to be organized these a little bit better so we can actually use them for our project. The first thing we want to do is we want to use the idea of using that MVC structure for our game because we want to have the idea that we can keep our stuff well organized and structured as we do this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to the Quick Game folder. That's the folder within the actual solution itself. And we're going to add three folders for this. The first folder, Model, View, and Controller, are going to be used to actually store the information for our project. So to do that, we're going to just right-click right here. And on that, we can just go to Add, choose the new folder submenu, and Model. And because this is using the C-sharp code structure. We're going to use the same naming conventions of that where our folders are starting with a capital letter, unlike with Java. And so we'll have a cap, our naming space structure uses that with it. And do the same thing again for view and controller. So as you can see, I have my three folders, model, view, and controller right here. They're listed inside my alphabetic list of folders on the solution section. And that gives our basic structure immediately set up. Now we're going to clean up our structure for our project itself. So it has some, it looks a little bit better for just the base structure of the code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our, um, save our file right here. So we have it saved and we're going to add it to our GitHub repository so we have access to it. Then we're going to organize it and make sure it looks really nice. So what we do is we go over to Finder. In my Finder folder, as you can see right here, I have my silly game, morning, whatever, and my quick game that I just made. I'm going to add that folder to my GitHub repository. So I'm going to grab GitHub, quick game, drag it into GitHub, and it's going to create a new repository for this. So I select create and add. And as you can see, I have this giant uh, list of files and stuff that are going to be collected with this as part of it. But we want to make sure we do our settings totally proper for this. So the first thing we want to do Go up to our repository settings, and under repository settings, the second tab, the ignored files, this is where we're going to ignore the information we don't want to keep as part of our repository. And so we add to this bin slash in lowercase, and obj slash in lowercase, which are the compiled files and the intermediate files that we use to actually create these projects. Once we do that, we hit save, and we have our git ignore that's now added to that list. We have 11 changes. Again, with the standard process of our git message, we want to make sure we use a nice, clean, understanding thing. So we're going to say create a project and add it to the repository. Using full sentence structure right there has all the appropriate files with that. Go ahead and commit to master. As you can see right now, it's all listed with lovely green. It's all text-based information, stuff that we want to see keeping with it. We have a couple icons that are part of it. And as we arrange and organize our code, we'll see how that goes for that. The next thing we want to go is go back to our actual Xamarin Studio. And now that we've got that into the repository, we're going to make some quick changes to this. Now, if you notice over here in the repository really fast, we actually don't have those folders in there because folders don't show up until they have content in them. So let's make folders actually show up. And so we're going to go back to Xamarin Studio, and I'm going to click on game1.cs and program.cs, and we're going to move them into our controller folder because they are part of the controller namespace. So we're going to drag those in and move them into the controller folder. We now have that little triangle right there showing they're inside that. As you can see, it closed the window right here. And we're going to reflect that change inside the code itself. So first thing we're going to do is open up game program.cs. Program.cs, as you can see right here, it says on the namespace is in quick game. But because it's inside this controller subfolder, we're going to update that. So it's going to be quick game dot controller. So we have the controller addendum to that. And then hit save. Do the same thing for game1.cs, namespace, and dot controller. And as you can see, it auto types it once you've typed one. Hit save again. Now, this is the beginning of our structure. We've got that's okay. We've got some basic pieces with that. But as you can see right here, my class on this is called game one. Game one really doesn't tell us what it is, 
but it's how it's referred to over here inside program.cs. As you can see, it's a game is a new game one object. But we want to have the idea that our instances and our names of our classes reflect more what they are and what they do. And so we're going to change our class name to actually match the idea of what we're actually going to be building. So I'm going to click on this right here, choose refactor and rename. And instead of game one, we're going to call this quick game or first game. And so our quick game project, inside that I have firstgame.cs, and once I change this, we now see that firstgame is now an ex, um, a subclass of game. It updates it here right there as the class name. It updates the file name up here as well. And additionally, inside program.cs, it also updates it in here. So it's very important that we use the refactory name on the actual class name here inside the declaration section, and not simply on the file, because the file itself doesn't have that auto rename factor attached to it. Once we've got that, we'll go ahead and hit save again. We're going to go back to GitHub. And as you can see right here in my uncommitted changes list, we now see that quick game slash game1.cs is now changed to the controller subfolder and now called firstgame.cs. I click on that, those changes have been reflected associatively. And I look at my csproj file, which says we're not, no longer going to include a game1.cs. We're now going to include controller program.cs and firstgame.cs. We've actually updated that so it actually matches what the game itself is. So we're going to say rename files. and updated namespace. Again, using the idea that we're having a commit that makes sense, adds to it. We have our history right there, so we have those basic commitments right there, ready to go. We're gonna go back to our structure right here. Again, we have our model view and controller packages. The program.cs file, we're not gonna really touch or use again at all, so we can go ahead and close that. We're basically done with it once we've added that namespace update. Our first game.cs is where we're gonna be doing all of our work for this. Again, as we do a quick little review of this, when we're using the mono environment, the initialize method is where we're going to initialize all of our stuff for the actual objects that are part of it. It's where instead of using the constructor, we load that right here. We still do have our constructor that exists with this, but the actual game engine itself of mono or mono game uses that initialize method to do a lot of the work where everything happens at initialization for the actual game. We then have our load content method. Load content method only happens once, and so it's very important that after we have that sprite batch right here, we then load all of our content in this section right here. Um, we notice right here also in the initialize method that the bottom, the base of the file, we call base.initialize. Because in C Sharp, we have the base dot at the bottom of the file, and that's where it calls the parent class, in this case, games version of initialize. So we go up to the games version of initialize and initialize based on those parameters. We also have then two other methods we're going to be using quite a lot for the structure, update and draw. These are methods that actually um, have the actual game itself run repeatedly over time, and so the draw method gets called every time we actually try and draw the screen. 60 times a second. The update is also happening at that same rate of that, where it updates all the changes of the game itself, 60 times a second. And notice at the bottom of these methods, it's base.update and base.draw, where it's going to call the superclasses version of that same method every single time. So we've got that basic setup right there we're going to be doing. The model package is where we're going to, or model namespace, excuse me, is where we're going to be putting all of our basic components. Our view components where we're still stuff that deals with the idea of animation and or specific actions of the development of the visual part of the game, and we'll have that happening. We have inside here this content folder. We have the content.mgcb file, and this is where we're going to actually load the pieces for our project, which we've seen in another video. But the basic, again, for our MVC structure, we make our three folders for model view controller. We move the program CS and the game one.cs into the controller and update the package naming or namespace naming appropriately. We add that file to GitHub, make sure we save and commit and get that ready to go and we have our beginning framework for our game structure at that point. Make sure you hit save often and always commit. Thanks and have a great day.